we are put into the world to try to produce something. That's what we're here for. When you sow a seed, you expect fruit. And the Son of Man puts us in the world, instead of taking us straight to heaven, once we're got, he's got us, he says, no, I'm putting you in the world to produce something, to produce fruit. But then there's an enemy. Bad seed, as soon as things start to come up, we say, well, things aren't good. What happened? What's all that, all those bad people in there? Well, the tares, or darno, depending on what you call it, the Greek word is tzidzidnia. I don't know exactly what kind of a weed it was, but there it was. They are the subjects of the evil one, the children of the evil one. You remember Jesus in John 8 talked to the Pharisees, the proud, hostile, crooked Pharisees, the ones who cheated widows out of their houses and made long prayers and were just horrible, horrible people and made everybody, you know, not want to go to church. If we see a rotten person in church today, we call him a Pharisee. And Jesus spoke to them and said, you know, you belong to your father, the devil. And the works of your father is what you do. He was a liar from the beginning. You tell lies. You tell it. When you tell a lie, it's just like your father. When he, tell, when he lies, he's telling something of his own because he invented lying. And he was also a murderer from the beginning. He takes life. And you're taking away lives. You're children of the devil. Well, that's what Jesus is talking about here. There are people like that. You don't have to look far to find them. Look in Congress. Hello. Look at Wall Street. Look in the Middle East. It's not hard to look around the world and people that you say, I think that they must be children of the devil. They're certainly not people that Jesus has put out into the world. Now, there are people who give themselves to him, as Judas did. We have free will, and we're asked to make a choice. Are we going to be servants of God? Are we going to take a stand with God's people? Or are we going to just try to be neutral and not be involved in the fight? You can't do that. The president of the seminary where I went to theological seminary said, There is no balcony, folks. We are all on the road. I think that's a wonderful image. Jesus put it this way, whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever is not gathering with me is scattering. There really isn't any neutral ground where you can say, I don't want to be involved. You can't do it because if you're not helping, you're the way. And this is what we're all challenged to do. And it doesn't matter if you're sitting in the pew every Sunday or if you're not on the golf course. The question is, are you really helping or are you in the way? Are you doing something? Are you involved or not? And we're all asked to be involved. Number one way to be involved is forgive everybody. Don't be the kind of person who writes nasty notes on the windshield of a car or does something to you or even cusses them out. That's not good for them. It's not good for you. We're all called to be on the right side because there's coming an end. There's coming an end, Jesus said, and that's the, one of the main lessons of this parable. There's an end of the world. And Jesus is coming, it says, with his holy angels. Have you ever thought about that? I don't know how many of you have studied the Bible well enough to know about angels and what they can do. One angel killed 183,000 enemies of Israel one time in one night. There was an army of 183,000. He went out and took care of them in one night. The Israelites went out in the morning, scared to death, and the whole army was dead. And they deserved it. I mean, they were the kind of people among whom Saddam Hussein and Hitler would have looked like nicer people than most. Well, Jesus had 12 legions of angels at his call in Gethsemane. He said, don't you know, if I wanted, I could call my father, and he would send immediately if you study the Greek here, it's very interesting. He would, he would immediately, not he might, he would immediately send me more than 12 legions of angels. There's more than is in that verse. Now 12 legions, 6,000 in a legion, that's 72,000 angels. That could do a lot of damage. 
No. And those same legions who did not come at that time, because Jesus said, I have power to lay down my life and I have power to take it again. He laid down his life. By the way, some theologians say God put him to death as a sacrifice. That's a lie and a slander. Because Jesus right there says, I have this as a gift, an authority from my Father. I can lay down my life or not. He gave me the decision. He says, and I've chosen to lay it down. To show you what love is. Because greater man has no, greater love has no man than this. Than to lay down his life with friends. Uh, that's a long topic that would be another sermon. But there's a, a final harvest coming. And that's why it's important for us to choose to be on the right side. Well, I don't even know what time now. I've probably taken more than my 20 minutes. So let's sing Blessed Assurance to close. One of our favorite hymns. And these themes, in different forms, will keep coming up in ways which I hope will be helpful to you. But every Sunday morning, I want to make sure that I emphasize again to you that God is love. God is not trying to keep people out of heaven. He's trying to get everybody in. He's not willing that any should perish. And he needs us all because he's chosen to work through us. As I've said before, often, uh, if I were advising him, I'd say, no, Lord, don't depend on people. If you want it done right, do it yourself. But he has chosen to use us. So he has chosen to need us. He's not operating by force in this world. He's operating by persuasion, and he's using us. So, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Let's see.